in times of like doubt, when you're really uncertain about how things are going to turn out, what do you turn to for strength? In terms of boxing, I turn to my preparation. In succeeding, there's always going to be a little bit of doubt. The days where you don't want to get up, you don't want to keep going, but you do it anyway. And then you're thinking about your opponent, what he's doing, and just saying, I can't be outworked. But what if I do lose? But then that that goes away that night of that fight when you walk to that, that ring and you take those steps up those stairs and you get underneath those ropes and those lights go on and then you just flip the switch. And knowing that you've done everything in your power to do what you have to do on that night or whatever it may be in life, you should be fine in that moment. What's up, you are here, gang? We have the pleasure of sharing Fido Melnicki Jr., White Magic himself, in the flesh, fighting live at Las Vegas. Saturday, November 25th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, live on Showtime. Catch the fight on pay-per-view and enjoy the episode. Welcome back. Welcome home. You are here, podcast episode 247. We're back, baby, and we have an amazing guest. Come on. But before that, got a little housekeeping. Yeah. If you want to learn how to act, if you want to, you know, you're a beginner, you're intermediate, you want to get back into it, anytownactorslab.com. It's the official partner of the We Here podcast. The best teaching, I said it, in the world for acting. Mm-hmm. Get on the website, anytownactorslab.com. Mm-hmm. And also shout out to the patrons, patreon.com slash you are here podcast. If you want to throw us a bone, if you like what we do, get on the Patreon, support us, patreon.com slash you are here podcast. And we're also twitching, twitch.tv slash you are here podcast. We're live, we're gaming, we're playing spooky stuff, we're reacting. You can talk to us there after the podcast. Yep. It's a great way to just see us more. It's a spooky season. Beautiful. Come spooky join. season. Yes, yeah, man. It's, it's fun. fun. <laughs> and dude, right. Dave, I want to pass it to you. Pass it to Because you got man. this. Give this, me the ball. You got this in Give me the ball. I don't know how you did it, but you got this. I don't know how it happened <laughs> either, dude. I don't know how it happened either. Life is so great. God is so good. Um, we got Vito Melnicki Jr. Yes, sir. on our show today, man. I appreciate you guys for having me. Dude. It's a blessing. It's an honor. Um, I'm sure this won't be the last time that we do something Dude, like this. Never, so, never that. Uh, yeah, it was funny how it all happened. Yeah. Like You came up to me in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you hit me up. And I'm like, I'm the type of guy, I'll go through my stuff. Because I know a lot of people DM me asking mm. for advice, asking for just showing support and love. And uh, I saw you hit me up, and I'm like, yo, for sure, that, that's fire. Like, <laughs> that's let's do it. I never did something like this, so uh, it's exciting. Dude, we're, we're blessed to have you, man. You, man. Absolutely. The doors open to you always. We're behind you 100%. The champ is here. Yes, um, um, Man, I, to start this show, I don't even know what yeah. question I want to get to first, but I'll say this. I known about you for a while, and you mm-hmm. know, I, I told you I was training at Whippany for a while, and, and Big Lou, and, and my, my uncle, I love you, Uncle Lange. He was telling me about you, Vito, and he yeah. was like, man, you got to meet this kid. He's incredible. Yeah. And then I started reading up on your fights and stuff and watching you, and I was mm-hmm. like, dude, this kid's a phenom. And to be so young, dude, you're, I mean, you're, I don't even think you're in your, you're not even in your prime. No, I mean, I'm just getting started, obviously, yeah. but uh, I turned pro at young, 17 years old. 17. So, um, what was the amateurs like for you? How, how young? I turned, so amateur, I started fighting when I was seven years old, so my dad actually forged my birth certificate so you're really not supposed to start fighting like amateurs till you're eight so my dad forged my birth certificate and i was seven and i was fighting nine-year-olds ten-year-olds as a seven-year-old so my first 10 fights i was like i was 10 and 0 and then i lost two straight and then uh yeah i figured it out and i went on like a 20 or 30 fight win streak after that but more of like that those first few days in the gym were like were different for me from where I come from. I come from like a suburban area, Roseland, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my dad, knowing like my dad's a very real, like if I'm going to do something, you're going to do it the right way. And you're right. going to, you're going to full steam ahead. You're right. going to do it for real. You're not going to half ass. You're going to go. Yeah. So um, he brought me down to Newark, Roosevelt Ave, Jamar Carter uh, and Project Turnaround. I think it's it was called. So it's down neck. And then I, I got out of the car for the first day and I looked around and I was like, this is new to me. Like, you know what I mean? I've never been around something like this. I've been in Roseland, New Jersey my whole life, <laughs> but it was different. And I took those two steps down into the basement of an abandoned church <laughs> and mm. those guys brought me in as family. Yeah. And then from there on out, the first day, first few days, it was different. I didn't really like it. But once I got past those first few days, I fell in love with it 
I turned into a gym rat, and I just started to perfect my craft. Just wow. That's that's where it all started, right? It was there. like your identity was kind of found there. Yeah, really. I've always been like a. I played football growing up okay, too, so okay. football was like my first love, and to this day, I still love football. I Who's watch your team, the Jets. Let's yeah, beat Let's go, man. And so yeah, Come so on, the Jets. Um, die hard. <laughs> Come so, on, me too. Die though. hard. So it's, I told you we were home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what's it called? So yeah, football was like my first love. Like I loved mm-hmm. football growing up. I just yeah. loved the phys- physicality of it. Like. Right. But then I found boxing and I found that it was just, if I put in the work, like it's going to show. Like if I'm in the ring, it's just me and my opponent. I don't have to depend on this guy, this guy, this guy. It's me and my opponent and my preparation. If I'm prepared and I do what I'm supposed to do each and every day, I get up, get my road, uh, my miles in, go to the gym after school. And I put in that work. Once I get in the ring, it's going to show. But if I don't do that, then... You'll see what happens. You're gonna probably fall off, have a bad night in that ring. Obviously, wow. you could have a bad night whenever, even if you're prepared as well. But more often than not, your preparation preparation is gonna show uh, in those moments of like where you need it. You know what I mean? That pre- when it yeah, hits, when man, it yeah, pressure moment. makes diamonds. You know True what I mean? Wee. So, but when that preparation's off, when you think you could have done another five miles and you slept, <laughs> do you feel? Do you really psychologically? Does that mess with you? Oh, uh, does it? Wow, man. So I'm 15 and one as a professional. Yeah. 15 and one, you hear that one. So that that fight was a moment where preparation, the, my preparation was not proper. <laughs> and I went in there uh, against a tough opponent from Philly. You know, Philadelphia fighters, those boys are dogs oh. over there. And uh, I was on a high. Like I was my first fight after coming off my first fight on Channel Five Fox. Okay. Um, live on TV in front of millions of people. I believe it was February twenty seventh. That fight. That was my uh, seventh fight coming out on Fox as a as a nineteen or eighteen year nineteen year old kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, I uh, had a great knockout. I think it was fourth round knockout against Noe Lopez. And then. I took a month off, let my body recover because I was really grinding. I was staying in the gym, not like, but not serious. Like I was, Mm -hmm. I got my first car, I bought my first truck and I feel like my mind a little bit, like I got a little comfortable Uh Mm -hmm. and complacent in a way, which is crazy because I didn't achieve nothing Mm -hmm. compared to like what I'm going to, like where I have aspirations to get to. And I got the call from Al, Al Heyman, my advisor. And he told me there's an opportunity that showed up for May 15th of that year. And I said, absolutely, let's get to it. Yeah. But then that fight had fell out. And then he called us back and said, listen, uh, uh, that fight fell out, but then a slot opened up on April 17th, so a month earlier. So it was like the end of March. End of March. I'm in the gym. I'm working. Is there any part of you, Vito? Sorry to interrupt. That's, that's thinking, No. No. Not for me. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was never it was never a thought. I was like, I'll fight whoever, whenever. That's always been my mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Since I was a kid, I fought the best. If I went to a one-day show, my dad, my trainers picked out the best guy that was near my weight, and I fought him. That's how it always was. Yeah. And uh, so that it was like a, three weeks before the fight, and my dad kept telling me in the kitchen, which this was another like lesson learned but he told me like i don't i don't think this is the right move like this this ain't right something's not right like your preparation you're not bring your weight isn't right and that that fight was actually the first time in my career where i ever did a catch weight i did a catch weight at 152 mm. and at that that time i was fighting 147 okay. because my weight wasn't right i was overweight like i said i got a little bit of complacent eating the wrong foods i was just doing stupid like i wasn't in the gym i wasn't locked in like i've always been since i'm 7 years old mm-hmm. And then that night came and that I was in the locker room and I, I remember vividly, I turned to my dad and my coach and I just said, I said, my legs are heavy. Like yeah. my legs are heavy. Like, I don't know what's going on. And my dad and my coach said, you're here now. Like it's time to go. You know what Man. I mean? You are you got eight rounds against a guy from Philadelphia by the name of James Martin, who's been in there with some guys and he could fight. He yeah. spars Jerron Boots Ennis every day. Man. So I'm like, I, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. So I walked in and I remember I'm in the about to walk out. My song's about to come on. And I always have the Eric Thomas at the beginning of Wins and Losses by yeah. Meek Mill. Yes. His yeah. intro always comes on before. 
And that was the first time where I'm like, in my head, I had doubt. Wow. Like real doubt. Like not I, when you have doubt, but you're prepared, it's a different kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. My legs are heavy. I'm walking to the ring. I didn't have like that. Like, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fuck this guy up. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Man. Like, I'm like, when you get underneath those lights, if you flip that switch, I go from Vito to White Magic. Mm. Like, my ring, like, you know what I mean? So I get in, I look like my body, everything. Everyone told me, my mom, most importantly, she told me, she was like, you just didn't look like it was almost like an outer oh, body experience. Like, you know mm. what I mean? It wasn't you. And. I just, I went in there. I lost an eight round uh, majority decision. I won a few rounds. It was eight rounds. So if I, like, it was 50, uh, 77, 75, 78, 73, or 72. And one other one was a draw, actually. Oh. So it might have been a majority decision. And, but in all honesty, I had no shot did I deserve a draw wow. or to win that fight. And, uh, yeah. Later, a few months later, I tried to make a rematch. Actually, two months later, I tried to make a rematch. And it was Al Heyman, my advisor. I'm blessed to have him in my corner. He's done a lot for me in my career. Shout out Al. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Al. Um, best in the business. He he him he got me a, a homecoming, coming off a loss. Wow. And he got me a homecoming at the Prudential Center. Wow. And he said, all right, we're, we're going to make this rematch happen. Is that happen. the Christmas Day fight? No, that was July. So I fought April and I fought oh, July. Wow, okay. It was a quick turnaround. Okay. And I've never been so locked in, like, in my life. Like, yeah. never been so locked in in my life. I, I put together a real camp. I brought in guys to make a real training camp, got a house, mm -hmm. locked in for eight weeks. And I was so ready. I was yeah. so prepared. And two days before the fight or before the weigh-in, I walked into the trial scale room and there was James. And he was 18 pounds overweight. My God. He was 18 Damn. pounds overweight. So, Ew. Me in my head, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like I'm cool, like you're we're, gonna dance we're, still. I'm gonna dance, like you know wow, what I mean. But wow. then uh, the weigh-in comes, the weigh-in day comes. He couldn't get it off. He was seven pounds over, I believe, Damn. that day. And I remember just listening, going back to a lesson I learned from the fight where my dad told me, "Let's not do it." Mm -hmm. Like it ain't right. My dad and Al Heyman both said, "No, nah, we're not doing this." Right. Like. Mm -hmm. We're gonna regardless. We're gonna make you what you what you're gonna be in the sport. Like you don't need this guy to be right. to get to where I want to be. Obviously, wow. he's always in the back of my mind just because of that blemish on my record. Yeah. But I look at him as a lesson, not a loss. And that night was probably the best thing that could have happened to me in my mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, I'll never, I'll never get comfortable again in my life. And I have this, I have this on my arm. Comfortable being uncomfortable, right mm -hmm. here. Love mm -hmm. it. And my dad's always told me that, like, stay uncomfortable. Like, yeah. it's good to be uncomfortable. That's, right. yeah, that's, that's right. those yeah. are the situations where you're gonna grow, where that's you're right. gonna, where you're gonna prosper. You're gonna, you're gonna just become a better version of yourself overall. Mm. And I've, I've uh, lived by that, like my since I'm seven years old, wow. six years old, brother. Do you think that had to happen? Do you think you had, like that was written? Kinda? Absolutely. You had to do that. Absolutely. I think God's got a plan, and He's got. He's just got everything lined up, and he saw me get in a little comfortable. I think I believe what he can give, he can also take. That's right. Mm. That's and right. I think that was his way of showing me, you better lock back in. Like mm. you're you're starting to fall off a little bit with your with what got you to where you are. That's right. And that's I believe that was just, that was like I said, the most important fight of my career. And that to that day, that's my, I, people are looking at me like I'm crazy. Mm. I say that's the favorite moment in my career, my favorite moment in my career, because it's going to make me yeah, what right. I want to be. That's and right. it just, that feeling of going home and I took a red eye home and the fight was in LA. It was in the bubble during COVID. Yeah. Um, crazy times too, but, uh, whatever we'll go. If we ever catch up on that, we'll talk about it. Totally. But, um, I'm in the bubble. It's a five-hour flight to L.A. My coach had got COVID, so I didn't have him for like two weeks. It was just all around. Shouldn't have fought, but yeah, yeah. whatever. I'm a fighter. I'm going to fight. We're going to get down. We're going to do what we got to do. And uh, that flight home, it was a red eye. I fought at like 8 o'clock. I was on a red eye by like 11.55 going back home. My face is all swelled up. I'm in L.A. airport. People are looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I got glasses on, and that plane ride, I didn't sleep a second, mm. and I'm in there, and it's dark, mm. and I'm just sitting there looking at the seat in front of me, and I'm just 
thinking like i'm so deep in thought like and the one phone call that just when i talked to my mom because my mom is like my rock like through everything like i'll always lean on her like my dad and me and my dad have a very good relationship but my mom is my like my rock and what i like when when you find purpose like my family is who i do this for because i know what they've mm-hmm. sacrificed in the years of me going away being not at holidays being not at family parties not being around taking my dad away from my family for such a long time mm-hmm. when we're traveling fighting as an amateur so my mom we talked after that fight i lost and uh I was so. I just said. I said. I'm sorry. Like you know what I mean. Like I. Like this is. You're do who I do this for. Like, I'm sorry. Like that. Mm-hmm. This happens. And my mom. I remember. She was like, "You have nothing to be ashamed." Like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know how a mom's oh, gonna no, react, no. obviously. But uh, yeah. I just and I just told myself in my mind, I'll never have that feeling again. Not by and not by choice. Like I believe that was by choice by not preparing. Yeah. But if I put in the work and I put in everything that I possibly could and I do lose, at least I have that in my mind. No, you did everything that you could right. in preparation and you put in the work. You were locked in for eight, eight to ten weeks. Like You sacrificed time away from your family. You put it in, but you came up short. I'm, I feel like... In a way, not that you could live live with that, but you could know, like, all right, you put in, the, like, you did nothing. You had no stone unturned. That's right. He was just a better man that night. Right. And I believe that happens. I believe every 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 man has their night. That's like, you know what I mean? That's Everyone right. has their night. That's that's how it com- what it comes down to. But when you're not prepared and when you don't put in the work, then that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Every I heard it put. Every every man has that another man out there that could put him down. Yeah, but. The man to put you down, brother. I think I think they're hard to find, yeah. and especially when you prepare the way you're, mm-hmm. you're preparing now. I think that's a hard person to find. Absolutely. Dude. And uh, and thank you for sharing that about no, your mom. Absolutely, mother. absolutely. That's absolutely. beautiful. I know exactly. I love you, mom. Hey. If you're watching, I love you. Shout out, mom, and dad. And let's talk about mom and dad a little bit. Brother. <clears throat> yeah. What qualities you think when you look at your mother and you look at your father? What kind of qualities do they have that you think that you you got from them? So my mom. If you ever meet her, she's a real laid back person. <clears throat> My mom just chills. She'll sit in the room, just chill. My dad's very loud. Like you walk <laughs> in the room, you feel his presence. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's very nuts, but he's a great guy. He's the best. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. My mom just everyone always says like you're nothing like your dad because I'm so chill. Like. Yeah. I'm just, I walk in the room, I'm chilling, I'm just right. laid back, I'm right. going to observe everybody, see what everybody's about. My dad, he's loud, you're going to feel his presence, <laughs> and uh, he's going to make it known that he's in the room, That's like, right. you know what I mean? But uh, my mom, my dad, my dad, since I'm a kid, I just remember him getting up 4.30 in the morning, going to work, and uh, just getting after it, like, yeah. earned everything he's got, mm-hmm. and feel like that's where i get my like i'm gonna go out and get it kind of you know what i mean like yeah, attitude yeah. and mentality my mom she's just a resilient woman like mm, mm. with me traveling taking away my dad from our family from for so long since i'm seven years old um my dad's got a lot of stuff going on like she's just resilient like she's been through a lot like just with life in general right. and uh yeah so just my mom's the strongest person I know. Wow. Love my mom to death. Wow. Like the most important thing in my life for wow. sure. Wow. Wow. I have two sisters and a little brother as well. And yeah, they're just, my family's who I do this for. That's right. Like I have a purpose and like that's, that's my purpose. Yeah. Making sure my mom, my mom says all the time, she lives, my my mom says I have everything when I have my kids. Like as long as she's got her kids, she's good. She has everything that she needs. And but I know I have so much more to offer for her and so much more to bring to her life that uh I've made a promise to myself and a promise to them that however I'm gonna get it. That's right. And I'm gonna do it for them. Yeah. So yeah. That that belief, dude. Yeah. It's unshakable what you got. It's confidence. I, I believe manifestation, putting things into into out there just talking it to it speaking it to existence i believe i do that 100 percent. i write things down i have an agenda book that i write things down and i just started recently actually writing Mm -hmm. things down Mm -hmm. but yeah just writing things down is putting that into the universe and i believe it comes back and it's gonna everything's gonna come full circle i truly believe that and 
God's got a plan for everybody. Whatever whatever mm-hmm. his plan is for me, that's that's what it's gonna be. That's and right. I'm I believe he's got me hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. Wow, man. It seems like everything is just like I feel like this is like something I was missing when I was younger. It's like the setup, Holy. like setting up everything for success. Holy. You know? Well, I mean And to, it, to learn that I think you probably for sure got that from your yeah, parents and my parents, yeah, you definitely. Know, to, but to, to keep doing that, though. That's right. It's hard, man. Yeah, yeah. How often do you think that happens where the setup is kind of, yeah. God brings these things together, let's say, right? Yeah. And it's all there. And you got this talent you're blessed with. Yeah. And then you put the work in. And then also How many people through. fall off? Yeah. How many people Definitely. in your situation Definitely. that you've known, that you've come up with in the amateur? I know guys that are way more talented than me. Right. <clears throat> have all the talent in the world, but it comes down to consistent hard work. That's right. Yeah. And who's dedicated, who's driven, who's determined, who's got the discipline to get yeah, in the yeah. gym each and every day on those days where you don't want to take your head off that pillow. Yeah. Every, like, and you got to get off, get up off that pillow and go get it, however you feel. Yeah. Right. Your legs are sore, so what? Go do it. Right, right. And your also, arms are sore, so what? Go do it. You, right. you had a bad yeah. night emotionally, yeah. so what? Get up, go do it. Yeah. And that get up and go get after it mentality and however you feel, that goes back to being uncomfortable and staying comfortable uh, comfortable when you're uncomfortable. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the, you already kind of talk, answer, answered a lot about it and the, with the loss and everything. It's like, you see a lot of fighters go through it, like to come back and do it again. Mm-hmm. Like was the, the fight back like before that, were you feeling any different than you were before? Uh, I go in every Must fight like with that mentality of like, I treat every opponent the, yeah. opponent the same. Um, but I just feel like having that feeling after that loss, like, I just never want to feel like that again. Yeah. Like, and I believe that that happened to me for a reason. Yeah, right. Like, like I said, I felt like I got a little complacent. I got a little comfortable. Meanwhile, what I want to get, the where I want to go in the sport, I haven't reached hmm. nothing yet. Mm-hmm. Like, and I truly believe that. And I... I've been at the top of the sport my entire life. Like I've mm-hmm. won national titles. I've been on the USA Junior Olympic team. Right. And I feel like a lot of people don't really know that, to be honest, Like, which I don't really care. They're, what people think really doesn't mean nothing to me. Mm. But mm. a lot of people also do believe in the boxing game, they believe that I've had a lot of things handed to me. And okay. I've heard that out there, like in the sport, like, oh, he's had a lot handed to him like his dad's got a like his dad's got money nobody knows nothing about my dad wow where he's been what he's done yeah. what he's been through to get yeah. where he's got yeah. my dad's never given me nothing a day in my life everything yeah. i got i worked for yeah. yeah yeah everything i've achieved in boxing thus far i've worked for i've been in the gym grinding since i'm seven years old yeah. breaking my ass mm-hmm. getting after it mm-hmm. and that's why i really I don't believe in, I believe in motivation, but I believe motivation is temporary. Like a lot of people use temporary motivation to get up for certain things mm-hmm. more, mm-hmm. but I believe that you put in the work consistently and you're disciplined and you're, you're just locked in. I believe that's, that's where uh, success comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, we could, we could definitely tap in more on like, like people how what people how people over like look at me brother i didn't know this at all no definitely people that's like a big thing in in the boxing i believe which i've heard which i don't care but i've heard yeah yeah like i like i said i come from a suburban area right like and you know the people in boxing they come from treacherous areas like right and 100 percent i i respect and i've been around it my entire life Mm -hmm. i've seen it all mm-hmm. like i've been in the gyms and on mount pleasant ave roosevelt ave up uh in the gym with tank shakur wow, like wow. down in upton in baltimore like philadelphia gyms like i've traveled around my entire life in those areas and worked and pff, really just it's all gonna show my time's coming i just gotta stay patient mm-hmm. and uh keep putting the work in just block out the noise that's right. and lock in. That's right. Mm. That's how it's been my whole life. But I'm just gonna just keep going. It's all chatter. Yeah, just all chatter. It don't mean nothing. I don't really. It doesn't really mean. Yeah. I just wanted to. You know. No, I like, love it. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. I love that you're talking about yeah. it. But man, I did, I I heard about it. I never heard that before. Yeah. But I guess in the community, people in, in the boxing world, shit. maybe. I mean, I don't know. Like I've seen it. I've read it. Uh, some guy. I remember. I read a DM. Oh boy. He Good said DMs. something like. Uh, <laughs> he suffers from imposter syndrome or something like wow, that. Wow, wow. And it <laughs> was point? funny. Like I was I was reading it and I'm like, yo, this guy really doesn't like 
how bored is he? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like think this guy that. must be really it's bored. A sick it's, about man. That. it's a sickness. It's a sick, but like that's what I'm saying. Like I laugh about it. Like I, yeah. my sisters, like they read comments. They read it all. <laughs> and my girl too. Like they read my brother, my mom. Like yeah. they read comments oh, under. Man. Under the page. And they're telling Do you. Do they go at him? <laughs> no. And my, my sister's like, oh, I want to respond back. <laughs> Like I want to, I want to respond, but I'm like, who cares? Yeah, like, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna do my thing that's regardless. Right, like right. it doesn't matter. You know they what say I mean? though, once that starts happening, that's how you know you're really you're yeah. doing something. I mean, you're doing you're something, something right, that's definitely. Right. So that's right. I mean, I'm I'm appreciative of my supporters. I'm appreciative of yeah. the doubters. I'm appreciative of everybody that that watches me and just even those doubters. Like I said, they give you that extra push. That that like hundred percent just to prove people wrong. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. Like. So yeah, I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the people I heard it put, uh, uh, you know, if you want to see further, I think I was Isaac Newton or some the guy the Apple drops and yeah. he's like, I'll grab it. Uh, he said something about like, uh, if you want to see, if I wanted to see farther, it was because I I stood on the shoulders of giants. You know, to be where I'm at, to yeah. to see farther down the road. It's only, I'm only able to do that because of the people that came before me mm-hmm. and that helped me and yeah. that lifted me up. Definitely. Who is it like that you're standing on the shoulders of, dude? Like who 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 helped you get to this point? Like I said, my f- I truly believe it's my family. Yeah. Like yeah. Without my family, like I don't think any of this is possible. Right. Uh, most importantly, my dad's been a huge part of my journey in the sport, giving me opportunities to to be the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. Like breeding me to be the kind of fighter, the kind of athlete that I am. My dad's never been involved with boxing. Wow. He's when I started boxing, he became like a, a boxing promoter. He's got a few fighters. But, um, yeah, my mom, my sisters, my brother, they've sacrificed so much mm-hmm. for me to be where I'm at and where I'm going to be. But I'm so thankful for them because, like I said, missed since I'm a kid, seven years old, yeah. Friday nights, no, nah, you're not going out. You're going to the gym. Mm-hmm. Saturday morning, all right, you can't stay out late on Friday night. You got to be up Saturday morning That's for sparring. Right. Monday nights, you got to be up 4.30 for training before school. Yeah. Holidays, I fought on Christmas. I haven't had a Thanksgiving in about four years, five years. Oh, man. Wow. Birthdays, I celebrated several birthdays on the road. One in Canada, one in Puerto Rico, and one in, I believe it was Vegas or Texas, one of the two. Mm-hmm. And those moments for my mom, like... She's has had very limited like holidays, events with me just because of my journey in boxing Mm -hmm. and with my dad as well, because wherever I'm at, my dad is usually at. (laughs) So as a kid, like a lot of kids, they grew up without parents and and whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And in a way, like I feel like I've taken my dad away from my my brothers and sisters and my mom for the for my journey, for Mm -hmm. for boxing and i feel like my for me to repay them will be for me to give it my all every day Mm -hmm. and when you have people who believe in you like i believe you have to put it in like you if you're not putting it in like you're like you have people who believe in you better put it in Mm -hmm. like you know what i mean they Mm -hmm. believe in you better believe in yourself and you better put the work in Mm -hmm. and uh I feel like it's disrespectful if you have like a team behind you, a family behind you that sacrificed so much and you're not doing giving one hundred and fifty percent each and every day. I believe it's it's disrespectful to them and to yourself as well, most importantly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, standing on the shoulders of my family without them, none of this is possible. Mm-hmm. Man, what time are we at? Are we good? I can talk. Bro, okay. this is flying. Okay. Yeah, Honestly, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. No, no, I'll be real. I rush us through this. We don't even have to ask questions. I mean, just, you just talk. <laughs> I can it's great. You talk. You should just do this. I got questions, though. <laughs> bro. I got no, more we could, questions. We could go. If, if it's over an hour, don't worry. Okay. Matter. Okay. Um, so, like, you come from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> bro, you come on your from, shoulder. That's right. Roseland, that's New Jersey. Yeah, bro. Yeah, we got yeah. this thing about us where we, we feel like the world laughs at us sometimes. You know, bro, yeah. Yeah. The Jer- Jersey, of that's America. Right. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's what it said. But right. I feel like you get a lot of love from where we're from because we ride with you. Absolutely. You represent us. Absolutely. So when you go into these rings, like, do you feel that? Do you Absolutely. feel New Jersey with you? Absolutely. Uh, my, my social media, everybody's, I see everybody commenting Jersey. Uh, just, and I feel like everybody from Jersey, they carry that natural chip on their shoulder. Like you got something to prove, like, you know what I mean? And 
I see the love. I see the support when I fight locally. Like everybody's coming out and showing support and just, just they appreciate. And I give, I try to give, try to give back to my like going to my my elementary school and everything. But they appreciate someone like me who's putting in the work and is willing to get to where they want to get to. That's like right. you know what I mean. So That's right. I'm just grateful for the mentality that I feel like being from Jersey has given me. Because right. I feel like. However, whoever you are, like you're from Jersey, you carry like that. Like I said, a natural trip on your shoulder yeah, yeah, yeah. to prove everybody wrong and just prove yourself right. And yeah, so like I feel the love from Jersey all the time. <laughs> like it's just like that. You just feel it. It's like yeah. an aura. Like yeah, yeah so you know, Jersey. You carry shout a state out Jersey on your back, bro. You yeah. carry a whole state on your back. Yeah, dude. but it's a lot. Boxing is such a such a unique thing. And I said this to you before we started. A lot of the people that I met that have boxed in the past, like you know, Big Lou or Angelo or yeah. Chase, you know, we had him on, and you now. There's like, a, there's something about this craft, man. There's something, there's something about this martial art that like, it does something to you. You you, you experience a thing that not many people experience. You are one individual, right? For, and and you just, we're all human beings here. So, it, there's there's part of you that has to go in there and say. Whatever part of you it is, I'm gonna hurt this man. Yeah, I'm gonna put him down. Yeah, there's another part of you, and a part of everybody in that ring. I know that steps in that ring. Who like Mike Tyson? I'm scared. That's who we talked about that before. Bro. Did you really? <laughs> he just texted that to me. What did we just say? Yeah, like you walk in, like you. He says it in the locker room. Like I've like and in training camp preparation. Like I have fear. Like this guy. I'm fe- like I'm. I fear this man. Right. Right. And I believe it's more of like. You don't fear him, but you fear the possibilities of what can happen that night in the ring. Like, nobody realizes, like, that's why, like, there's a lot of stuff going on with, like, the YouTube fighting and everything. Like, whatever. They want to do it. They could do it. Whatever they want to do. Like, you know what I mean? Get get the bag. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. If, that's, you know, if that's what you're doing it for. But I feel like the possibilities, I believe that boxing had nine deaths last year wow wow nine or ten deaths last year every time you take those steps up into that ring you go into those ropes you're putting your life on the line for others entertainment like you know what i mean i don't believe that a lot of people put it in perspective that way they look at it as an entertainment thing which rightfully so that's what it's brought out to be the 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 pre-fight with the media the guys talking a lot of show it's a show ultimately but at the end of the day one second could change a man's whole life and a family's whole life. That's right. Yeah. And for other people's enjoyment and entertainment, every fighter that gets in there, I have the utmost respect for. Yeah. Because of the possibilities that could happen every time that they step in the ring. That's right. That's right. So, man, do you think about that? Does that pass through your mind ever? You're just locked in. Man, I'm just locked in. Yeah. Like, there's been a few times in the locker room where, like, one time in Vegas, uh, specifically, my dad. He, I have my hat that I put on before the fight, which has my sponsor on it. Okay. Shout out EEG, Enterprise Events Group. Always showing love since I'm probably like 4-0 when I fought at the MGM Grand. But they, uh, I have my EEG hat. And before the fight, I'm so dialed in. Like, I'm locked in. Like, I get into like this zone where everything that's going on, like, doesn't matter. That's right. Like, the only thing that matters is me and my opponent mm-hmm. and my, like, what I'm going to do that night. Mm-hmm. So before the fight, I remember I'm on, I'm fighting on Fox Sport One, and it's funny. My dad, he looks at me, and he's and I remember him just looking at me and him trying to put my hat on, fit my. It was like a snapback hat right. and with the EEG logo, and he's trying to fit my hat, <laughs> and I didn't even realize that it was him because I'm so tunnel vision wow. in. Like you know when like you black out, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens sometimes. You fight, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're arguing, and you black out. You say something stupid. Yeah. So I'm in the locker room, and I'm. My dad says to me. uh like let me let me fit your hat. Like you know what I mean? Let me yeah. let me fit the hat so it's right for the fight for the camera. And I remember I think they were showing me live in the locker room. And my dad goes and I said to my dad, like, like get the like you know what I mean? Like I'm good. Get the I'm, I don't need that. Yeah. But I'm really it wasn't me. Like yeah. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. locked in. Like yeah. I'm not worried about that. And my dad goes. I'm gonna fuck you up <laughs> before a fight. I'm gonna fuck you up. Fuck this fight. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, so, and after the fight, I be- it was like a third round knockout. I come back to the locker room and I'm like, Dad, did something happen? 
<laughs> you don't remember. Like, did something happen before the fight? Yeah. Like, what happened? And he just laughed. Like, it was, it was funny. <laughs> That's but, amazing. So, um, yeah. That, wow. th- those moments in the locker room before are, like, special. Like, Holy. And that ring walk makes cow- cowards out of a man. Like, <laughs> that feeling of... You got people, millions of people watching around the world, guy, and the people in the arena, like, you are going into that ring to fight another man <laughs> knowing something bad can happen. Any shot could could change the fight. I don't care who it is. Who it is. Like, one shot changes the whole fight. And like Deontay Wilder says, he says, I only have to be perfect for a fraction of a second. Yeah. With that right. With that right hand. And it's yeah. true. Like, and that's with anybody. One shot could change a whole uh, man's whole career, yeah, woman's yeah. whole career. Like, you know what I mean? It could change the your life. That's right. That's ultimately. Right. And I don't think a lot of spectators look at it that way. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, they shouldn't. I mean, most people aren't looking at it like that way because it's at their entertainment. Right, right. But as a fighter... That's how you look at it. Like you, after the fight, you put it in all perspective and you look at it like that. Yeah. 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 So what? I don't really feel it. Like, I don't think of it like that. Like, like I said, you have doubt of like fearing, fa- fear, fear, fearing like losing. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not fear. You don't fear your opponent. That man. Mm. You fear, you mm. fear the possibilities that can happen. And they run th- through your mind millions of times mm-hmm. throughout training camp. Mm-hmm. Mm. At the end of the day, as soon as I get my opponent's name, I'm dreaming about that guy. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy's on my mind all day. That's right. That's right. Like, that's... You've thought this fight through how it could go You've seen every situation times. in yeah. your mind millions of times already. So, mentally, you're so prepared and you've seen it all. What if What if I do get dropped? That's right. How am I going to respond? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to get up. I'm going to take the knee, eight count, get up, get my hands wiped off, come in. However I'm feeling, I'm going to box or I'm going to grab. Yeah. And recover. Yeah. Like all the, the the bad possibilities go through your mind. That's right. And but as soon as you get in there, that's when your preparation takes over. Uh-huh. And that's when you everything just goes off and you just perform. Like you just and as soon as that bell rings, it's almost like they say in football, like that first hit at the yeah. beginning of a game, yeah. like whatever nerves you had are out the way. Gone. Yep. They're gone. And as soon as that bell rings, ding ding ding. This guy across from me is coming to hurt me. Mm-hmm. It ain't happening. Wow. We got other plans. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what goes through my mind. <sighs> we got other plans, dude. Yep. We got other plans. So, I love this, dude. Yeah. Fuck, man. Um, one thing I wanted to get to was, so you've been boxing since seven, right? <laughs> yeah. Was there like a seven moment? Years old. That's crazy. <laughs> It's great. What, what were you doing, doing at seven? seven? I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was playing Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. That's all I was doing. Hundred percent. Um, was there a moment in your like? Where did you know that it was real? That you're a boxer now? Like, when did it feel real? Like where I looked at it as more of like a yeah, like you're res- like you're looked at, uh, recognized, you know, in the sport. Yeah, I'd say once I got to like going to those national tournaments mm-hmm. and like being ranked in the country um that's when i really looked at it as like wow i could do this like this is like something that like like i could do like this is like what i could this could be like my life you know what i mean like a lot of people like you play you play sports growing up like you do it for fun hundreds of kids you know around the whole country like you know what i mean so like i played football growing up um, I was undersized. I was a good football player too, but what position? I was running back and safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like I really looked at it and I was like, like I could do this. Like this is something that I could like really do. Like once I started winning, which I've been winning, blessed. I've been winning my like since I've started. Like yeah. I've really, which goes back to putting in the work. Like I've put in the work. Like I've grinded my entire life since I'm seven years old coming home from school my papa's sitting home waiting for me to bring me down to down to newark to go to the gym he's dropping me off after that i'm sitting in the gym till like nine o'clock at night 8 30 at night from three to eight i'm there just go home do my homework real quick yeah. i was never a good like a real good student like i was a good student but i wasn't a really good student right. like i would do what i have to do mm. But, like, I put in the work. Like, I've been at the top my entire life, but probably, like, around 13 or 14 where I was, like, like I love this. Like, this mm. is, like, this is what I want to do. What is it about you love? 
it's just the art. Like, it's just like, like I said, I just love the fact that if I put in the work, like, if I put in the work each and every day, I get up, I put my road work in, I, I after, well, not any school anymore, but if I get up, I put in my road work, I go to the gym again, I go to the gym again after that, putting in two to three sessions a day, and, like, there's nothing like that locker room. Like, mm. the feeling in the locker room is, like, <laughs> like, I'm dazed, like, you just, mm. it's sick. Yeah. Like, it's sick. I don't even know how to explain it's it. It's like a drug. It's like a drug. Like, you get addicted to it. Like, you're yeah. addicted to the thrill of... Wow. Like, just a walk out. Then mm. the bell ringing, them announcing your name. And I remember my pro debut. I wasn't really... So, this is actually a good story. So, my pro debut came after I wasn't... It was very unexpected. Like, I would have never turned pro at 17. But my dad... I was getting ready to go out and play football for my senior year. I stopped playing football at eighth grade okay i didn't play all of high school but my mom always wanted me to play a year of football in high school wow so i'm lifting or whatever i'm getting pretty bigger i'm getting bigger for the for the season i go to the coach and i'm like i want the playbook i go i'm talking to the, the quarterback i'm like i'm gonna come out like i want to get this down yeah just being the person I am, doing everything 100%. Like, yeah. if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Yeah. So I'm getting the playbook. I'm going to practices, taking going to the quarterback, like, doing our own little thing. And then uh, my dad calls me one day. I remember I come home from school, and he's like, I got an idea. And I'm like, <laughs> like, let's hear this. <laughs> so this is coming off my, my last amateur fight, yeah. which I went over to Spain, and I represented USA in Spain. Okay. And I got a horrible decision. I fought a kid from Spain <clears throat> in Spain. Spanish judge. Damn. Three Spanish Damn. judges. Damn. Go. Three Spanish go. judges, one Italy and one France. The Italy gave it to me 5-0, or 3-0. The, the France gave it to me 3-0. The Spain gave it 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. Oh, come on. Man. So whatever. It is what come it is. On. Yeah, it's what it is. And I was just, I told my dad after, I said, and it was happening frequently. Yeah. I was getting like bad decisions, which I've always had like more of like a pro-esque style. Yeah. And I told my dad after, I'm like, I'm done doing amateurs. Like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't, like, I I couldn't stand the fact that I was put in the work, mm -hmm. but it lied in another person's hands. That's like, right. yeah. And they could do whatever they want with it. Mm -hmm. There were, we were going to tournaments in Vegas and you got the fighter that I'm fighting's grandma as the judge. <laughs> come on. Like their man. aunts and uncles Dude, and all this. Like, come how is on. That, like, how's that possible? That's like, that's what that's I mean. Fine. So Conflict of interest, Whatever, huh? family, friends and all that. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, listen, yeah. I'm done. I'm done with the amateurs. So that's when I started lifting. I said, I'm going to go play football for the yeah, year. Yeah. Wow. And I was real excited. Like I was, mm -hmm. like I said, I have a real love for football mm -hmm. and I've always had a real love for football. So I was really excited. And then I come home and uh, my dad says to me, I got an idea. So I'm like, all right. And it, anything could come out of his mouth. So I'm like, what is it? You want to open a restaurant? Like, what do you want to do? Like, you know what I mean? So he's like, uh, there's a fight at the Prudential Center, July 13th. This was in 2019, July 13th. At the time, I'm like a buck 80. Like, I'm lifting. Like, I'm real big. And he's like, you can make your pro debut on it. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, Dad, we'll talk when you get home. Like, just get home. Like, you know what I mean? We'll talk when you get home. So that's another situation where I doubt in my mind. Right, like, right. I can't do this. This is five weeks, like probably five weeks away at the time, like six, five to six weeks away. You're not getting a full camp in your own way. I'm not getting a full camp in. I'm nowhere near weight. I haven't been in the boxing gym. Mm. And I'm like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> like, is he nuts? Like, anything could happen that day for something that we've been preparing for since I'm seven. Wow. So, and how important is that first fight? How important is it? it sets the tone for like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, and he's just like, look, this is what we're going to do. And I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? This could be it. Like, this could be like if on ESPN Plus. Right. And I'm just like, you know what? Let's do it. So I get into camp and I'm not nowhere near in shape. Like, it takes, honestly, the last two weeks is when I really started to get in real shape. Holy. Oh, man. So the fight comes the and 
it was it was electric, whatever. So I sold a lot of tickets, like through like twenty five hundred tickets, three three thousand tickets. My first fight, wow. after I fought, the place empty. It got empty. Oh, what? Yeah, you were the drug. So yeah, so whatever. Wow. So I'm in the locker room, and I just remember the locker room flew. Like I was there, and I was in the ring. Like and it was like three hours. Like I'm in the locker room, but it flew. I don't know what happened. Like, blacked out again. And bl- probably blacked out again. And I'm just like. Just like that natural instinct of yeah. like you're here, the moment's here, That's now right. it's time to perform. That's right. It's time to go to work. Mm. And so I remember like the place was packed. Like it was packed. So I'm in the locker room and then they say, Mel Nicky, you walk in five. So I get up, get my jacket on, get my hat on. I'm like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Like it's time to go. So I'm banging my gloves. And then as I'm walking out, I remember on the Jumbotron it had like a glass, like a breaking glass effect. And then it said Mel Nicky Jr. And then my song came on and I came out to, uh, it was supposed to be Wins and Losses by Meek Mill. Yeah. They messed up my song. It was oh. some like hard rock. Oh. So I'm like waiting and I'm like, yo, when's it coming? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, let's go. Like, when's this song coming on? And it never came on. So I'm walking out to some hard rock. So I'm bang. <laughs> so I'm like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Whatever I got to do. But I just remember that effect, like the glass, breaking glass effect. And then my name just popped up. Yeah. And the place went nuts. That's sick. The place went nuts. So I get in there. Amateurs, you fight with a shirt on, you fight with big gloves, you fight with headgear. Right. So mind you, it's my first time fighting with eight ounces, eight ounce gloves. Mm. And in the in the locker room, I remember I'm going like this, and I'm like, this is a weapon. Like this thing is a weapon. <laughs> you, I remember I put my hand in, and I'm like, like bro, I could hurt somebody yeah. bad with these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And then also in your mind, you got oh, he's got the same stuff That's on. Right. You That's know, right. He's got the same stuff yeah. on. So whatever. How's that gonna feel? So how's that gonna feel? So I get in. I take my jacket off, no shirt on, first time like doing that in front of like a, I don't care obviously, but it's like a, a no, you're a gladiator. It, yeah, it's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And no headgear. Come to the center of the ring, may announce my name. Place is going crazy. <laughs> Say whatever. Judge gives us the last directions. Touch gloves. Go back to the corner. I look at my dad. I always look at my dad before the beginning of every round. It doesn't matter where he's at. He does his whistle, and I just find him. Wow. Like me and him connect eyes wow. like that. And I remember looking at my mom, my brother. My brother was going crazy. He was younger at the time. My sisters. And everyone's nervous. Like, this is a huge moment. Huge. And the bell rings. First, I'm just getting my bearings, whatever. Just touching them, touching them. And then a minute and 16 seconds, I hit him a a body, hook, head. That out. Cold. (laughs) Cold. Right? But I just felt everything go through my hands, through my arms. And... Whatever, so I'm looking around and he's out. Oh. And like amateurs, it's hard to knock somebody yeah, out with the yeah, headgear on, yeah. the big gloves. This is my first time knocking somebody out, like real cold. Mm-hmm. Like they brought the smelling salts out. Like wow. they brought the stretcher. <laughs> wow, like, wow. Wait, so I'm, first round, it's done? First round, a minute and 16 seconds. Bro. So I'm like looking and I'm getting up on the ropes. Like I'm pumped up. up. I'm fired up, banging my chest. But I like I swear like this is true like and I'm seeing he's not getting up so I'm like it was like three minutes probably like a good three minutes so I'm like yo like is this like is he okay like that's the first thing I went through I'm like is he okay yeah 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 and then after like that moment like of me getting fired up I look over and he's still out and I'm like then I calm down and I'm like oh man. That's where it goes back to, yo, this is a human. Like, this is a man that has to go back to a family. And he's probably doing this to provide for them. Mm-hmm. So, whatever. He gets up. God willing. Like, everything's good. Blessed. So, he's good to go. He gets... They brought him on the stretch or whatever to the back. But uh, they, they're they talking to me. It was my dad's birthday that next day. So, I remember on the, on the mic, I was like, I want to wish my dad a happy birthday. Place went crazy. Like, everyone's going nuts. I'm taking pictures with little kids as I'm going out. Like, yeah. I was that little kid taking pictures That's with the right. professional as a, like, growing up. And now I'm the professional and little wow. kids are taking pictures with me. That's full circle. That's life. Like, that's mm. everything came together at one moment. And then, like, you look back and you're like, wow. Like, that's special. Dang, dude. So, but I get back to the locker room. Everlast comes in my locker room because I was I wore rival that okay. fight, but okay. then Everlast came into my locker room. I'm with Everlast now. Shout out Everlast. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Um, they came to my locker room. They were like, "We would love to speak to you." So then later that week or next week, I went to the headquarters in New York. Yeah. 
And then first fight. They're first like, fight. We want you. Yeah, first fight. So, but then it gets better. So we're leaving the arena, and I'm just like, "Yo, did that just happen? Like, <laughs> that just happened." So it's blowing up. Like my phone's blowing up. Like I like fifteen thousand followers Life overnight, like that. like that. So you go from being a kid that's just all right. You're a boxer, amateur fighter, and now you're making a pro debut. But now you're like a public figure. Oh like you got stuff God. on your back. Like you got to when you're out, you got to hold yourself like that's to right. a different. You're like, you know what I mean? Like, you're looked at differently. You yeah. do one wrong thing, you're just like, you're doing something. You don't stupid. take a photo yeah, with somebody yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. It's stupid. So, yeah. whatever. Um, I get back, and they had like a little thing at the Franklin Steakhouse in Fairfield okay. after uh, the fight. My family put together a little thing. Everybody came out. Everyone was there. So, when I walked in, the whole place went crazy. Like, they were already there waiting for me. My so, God. I come in, everyone goes crazy. It's like probably 1130. And then... Uh, we're sitting there. I'm eating wings for the first time in like a minute. So I'm happy. I'm with my friends, all my boys. Yeah. My family. Um, What's that like? Shout out to my friends, Vin, Matt, shout Jay. Out. Shout out. Adam. Shout out. Joe, Russ, all of them. They're, they've they been supporting me. Yeah. Tyler since, you know, forever how That's long. That's right. And uh, we've kept our circle small since I'm mm. a kid, like yeah. our Roseland group. So, um, yeah. But so we're in the steakhouse. And all of a sudden, Sports Center top ten. Oh no way! I swear on all the TVs, ESPN's on all the on all the steakhouse TVs. Come on. Number ten, number nine, number eight, number seven. Boxing, White Magic, Vito Melnicki Jr. First round knockout, seventeen year old. Dude. And I'm like, I'm looking, and I'm like, <laughs> That's I used to wake up on school days looking at Sports Center top ten, Come like on, before dude. school, like. Wow, like I'm blessed. Like this is crazy. This wow. is happening. Like what? Sports Center posts it like on Instagram, Twitter. Crazy. I think it had over like probably in all probably like five million views or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And it's not what I do. Like I did I have no care in the world for social media. Like right, to be right, honest. Like right. it's never been a thing of me where like I have people tell me you gotta post more, you gotta keep you know, updated on your stuff. It's important, especially yeah, nowadays. Yeah. People following. So but that's never like been like important like as important mm -hmm. like my work and my performances in the, in the ring are what's important to me but that's why people follow you you yeah know? so it's like or like it's everything i post is like organic authentic right. like it's real that's like right. it's in the moment that's real right. work like i'm not stopping my workout and doing a hard flurry for 10 seconds and posting it <laughs> yeah. like everything i do is real authentic but or, organic but yeah so that night sports center top 10 and then, uh, crazy. Then I wake up, I get home like three in the morning, and they're replaying it again on Sports Center Top Ten. I'm like, yo, that's wild. That's, that's crazy. So, yeah, life changed fast. Life, it, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. Because I was still that kid that was like, at the end of the day, I just still like, I'm still that guy that yeah. just loves doing, loves what he does. Like that's I, right. like I love what I do. Like that's I'm right. passionate about what I do, and I still have those same aspirations that i've had since i'm a seven-year-old or whatever 13 14 seven-year-old kid that i wanted to be a, i want to be a world champion okay like i regardless it always stays that that's, that's what it is like followers everything fans like all that fought like that that's really not my prior like what i look at I like i look at like what is my like where am i at in my like what am i doing in boxing like mm. Did I reach where I want to get to yet? Like, is that what? And I know I haven't. So I, I have so much more to accomplish, so much more to prove to myself. And I know I'm capable of it. But as long as I stick to it, stay locked in, keep working, uh, I believe that God's got his plan for me. And he's this is destiny. Yeah. And I'm going to get there. That's right. It's just a matter of staying patient. My time's coming. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right, Vito. Um, I had a question about stopping to smell the roses right because you're on this mission mm -hmm. it's hard man i think and you got to be grateful about the little things like i think you have God. to celebrate the little things okay. like you have to sell you you have to celebrate those little those little wins whether whatever it could it, it might not even be a fight yeah but you have to be able to sit back and be grateful about the things you've already done that's right because I feel like you could get lost on the journey a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I do believe you have to be a little unbalanced. Like, you have to be a little crazy yeah. to 
to sep- create separation and separate yourself from the crowd, yeah. you're going to be looked at as, you know, different. Like, yeah, yeah. like that guy is different. Like, yeah, yeah. and that's what I want to be looked at. Like, I want to be looked at. I also want to be looked at as just that regular kid that just did his thing. He locked in, he worked hard, and he got to where he wanted to be. But I also want to be just people see me, they say, yeah, that kid's different. Like, yeah. He 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 knows what he wants. He he's gonna get after it, and he's gonna go until he can't go no more. Yeah. So I saw you. <laughs> Real true story. First time I seen you, I caught the end of his workout. Oh yeah. I walk in. I'm I'm just wrapping my hands. He's stretching. I swear to you. I said, okay, he's different. Yeah. <laughs> just your stretch. Yeah. I'm not even playing around. And no one's in the gym. It's not like he's doing it for show or not. Yeah. I'm Mike. I'm not even kidding. I saw him stretch. I said, yeah. oh. and some of me just registered like. Kids on a mission and doing, and he's been doing this a while, mm. and I've never seen that before. That yeah. stretch, like that, serious. You yeah, know what I mean? Definitely. No one's looking. There's no one there. Uh huh. I feel like what you do in front of no one is gonna show in front of thousands. Come on, man. So that's it. Like I don't need, I don't need a big crowd to put in work. I believe it's gonna mm. be a lonely road yeah. to where I want to get to. Yeah. And I believe there's gonna be people that want to jump on, jump off, jump that's on, right. jump off. That's right. But I'm always going to keep that same circle and just that close, keep everybody close. That's like right. You let all that outside energy in. I believe that can create a lot of disruption in t- getting to where you want to be. And I'm always like, I'd ra- like I got to the gym today, Whippany. Yeah. I got to the gym today. I thought the gym opened at 5. So I got there at like 5.15. It opens okay. at 5.30. Yeah. Okay. So I'm waiting there, waiting there, waiting there. The kid gets there, whatever, 5.30, opens it up. And I'm in there alone, like, no music on in there. Like, I'm just putting in pain. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just working. Yeah, yeah. And I don't need nobody. Like, I I believe, like, I have my team that I need that that they're going to help me. But at the end of the day, like, those 2 in the morning runs, like, those 5 a.m. wake up, 4.45 (sighs) wake ups. Man. That's a lonely, lonely, like, life. Yeah. it's a lon- like it could get lonely and i believe it's gonna be lonely getting to where getting like if i want to be great a lot all athletes say it. like right. you they know it's gonna be lonely because at the end of the day it's a little corny saying but there's a reason why a bus has so many seats and a ferrari has two seats <laughs> like a lamborghini I has like two that. seats for a reason that's right a van has six is a 16 passenger van yeah. for a reason yeah and no way for him am I saying like this whoever drive I don't care what you do like it don't yeah, matter but yeah. there's a reason why that value is higher that's right than yeah. a 16 passenger van that's right so yeah it's a long it's gonna be lonely but I'm I'm built for it I know I've been bred for it my entire life mm-hmm. so it's just I'm excited I'm excited for what the future holds yeah, for man. where I'm at I I love the journey like it's just I just love working like yeah. When I have to take, like, my... Because I have mandatory recovery days. Okay. Because, like, I've experienced, like, beating my body up too much where I experience stupid little injuries. Yeah. Like, where my body gets a little depleted yeah, and yeah. just... So, I've had... Like, we've come up with a better plan of having mandatory recovery days. Mm. And those days, like, I just... I can't sit still. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Like, I'm still banging out push-ups in my room. Wow. Like, wow. I'm nuts. Like, I, and I believe that. Like, I'm unbalanced yeah yeah like i'm unbalanced it's gotta be a little so it's crazy like i my like people tell me like come on let's go no nah, i'm just gonna go to the gym right 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 like i'd rather just go to the gym like and i don't like going out like i've never been like the guy who likes going out like, i wanted to ask you that man. yeah i don't like like that's the sacrifice part of it yeah. where you see your friends your yeah, like when you're everything. doing what you love i don't think it's sacrifice okay right on right on like it's not sacrifice i'm doing what i love that's Why? right I would, like obviously it sucks being away from my family like that's the biggest thing yeah forget everything else yeah, like yeah me being away from my family like for because i'm in texas i'm in texas for this camp so <laughs> i was in texas for four weeks and then I told you I have to go back down to camp. I'm leaving Saturday, but like that sucks. Like I'm I'm a family. Like I've been built around my family. Yeah. So to me not being able to be with them, and I'm not gonna be with them for a few holidays. So like, it sucks. Like I, it's been like that my entire life. But okay. it's got to be like that. And yeah. I, it's all it's all gonna pay off. I know that for sure. Yeah, but for sure. Just like I said, if it's if if you're doing what you love, I don't think they're sacrifices. That's right. That's right. You're for, you're fulfilled. Yeah, you're exactly never satisfied, but you're fulfilled of being able to do what you love each wow, and every day. Oh man, come on! You hear the poetry in this man? Yes. Come on, dog. I feel like you know, 
I, I've been hearing a lot recently is like there's not a lot of people for like young people to look up to. Yeah. I feel like this is like a perfect example That's of a way That's what I like, wanted to say, dog. You know? You're, I used to look at photos yeah. and old film of uh, Rocky Marciano's fights. Yeah. And I would just watch. I'm not a, I wasn't a fighter growing up. Yeah. I didn't have none of that. Yeah. No one was putting me in the gym. But I just watched this man, no shirt, and he's just putting, you know, Jersey Joe Walcott out mm-hmm. with some hooks. Yeah. You know, undefeated, retires undefeated, heavyweight champ of the world. Mm-hmm. You look up to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> You look up to those Definitely. those men that yeah. step in that ring. Definitely. You just do. Just from talking, I'm like, oh, I'm going to the gym. After. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like, that's right. sorry, no, that's, go. the, that's the effect. Yeah, that's yeah, what your definitely. life can yeah. leave when when it's all said and done, dude. And yeah, this is yeah. let's just say 30 years. Now. Just yeah. give it whatever a lot it of time. Yeah, yeah, whatever, it whatever is, God yeah. has for you. Yeah. Vito, how do you want to be remembered? How do you want people to perceive you, your life, what you leave? What do you, what do you hope people glean from you? One word I want to I want to be known as consistent. Mm. Like, mm. like it's easy to be to put in the work or be like go to the gym every day for two weeks, three weeks. You're motivated at that point, but you go from motivated to driven to obsessed. Mm. And I think I've reached that that point where I'm obsessed, and it's really like I could be with anybody, and it's all I really think about. Mm. Like. And but I want to just be remembered, just as a another kid that had a dream, and he didn't stop until he got to it. Wow, that's it. Like I've always been the the outcast. Like I've always been the kid that missed out on stuff that wasn't there for school activities, that wasn't there for the birthday parties, that wasn't there for the holidays. But at the end of the day. It all paid off and it was all worth it. Mm-hmm. And I want to be remembered as the kid that was different, the kid that that stuck out from the crowd, that, that kid that was the 1% of that 100%. Like, I want to be remembered as that. And I believe you have to be a different kind of human being to, to want to be that. Like, mm-hmm. people are comfortable with being mediocre and that's not what I'm comfortable with. I'm not comfortable with being like everybody else. Yeah. I want to be different. Um, and I say I'm one of one. Like I have that tattooed on me because I truly believe it. That's right. And I'll never be at work. Could, I could be in a room of a hundred athletes. I know I'm gonna be willing to to go to that extent of like I'm willing to put my life on the line mm-hmm. just because of my pride and my and my like desire to be great. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to put my life on the line and put my body through so much pain to get to where I want to be. So I just want to be remembered as one of one. We'll put it like that. I'm one of one, one of a kind. I love it, dude. I mean, that's like one of one. Yeah, one of one. Yeah. That's how. Yeah, we all man. got that potential, man. Hundred percent. You do. Everybody does. That's right. You got to find just, your thing. Yeah, it's it's in you, like that. It's in you. At the end of the day. Yeah. That's what I believe. That's I right. believe everybody's got potential to be whoever they want to be. Yeah. It's just about are you willing to. To put in the work are you willing to like we sit talk about sacrifices That's like right. it sucks like it sucks like at the end of the day like i remember i used to cry sometimes going to the gym wow growing up like i used to cry like oh, i don't want to go today yeah like my mom always gets emotional talking about it because like she's seen it all like yeah. she has seen yeah. those days where my papa's waiting outside and he's like you got to go bring your homework in the car mm. like you got to go to the gym and i would just go upstairs and i'd stall oh <laughs> i'd stall for like a good 25 minutes oh, 30 minutes man. he's like you gotta go come on yeah. like, let's go yeah and i remember just looking at my mom and i'm like i don't want like i yeah. she could tell like he don't want to go like it. but you do it yeah you just do it and you keep pushing and those days that we talked about where like you don't want to do it where you really rethink like is this really what i want to do wow. that those are the days that really matter at the end of the day yeah. like though everybody could get up when you feel great mm. when everything's going your way like it's a beautiful sunny day yeah. like all right get up go do it like i believe the winter is like what you could really see what a person's about <sighs> like it's a dark time dark cold lonely like you're like that i I love the winter. Yeah, yeah. I've always loved it. I don't know why, but I've loved the winter. And I'm not just saying this because the camera's on me. I love the winter. Yeah. And I tell a lot of people that because you're really going to see what a person's about. Like, it's a dark, lonely, 
cold you're gonna see like what, what everyone's about that's at that right. time that's like right. who's really putting in the work i mean you have guys that do it because they want to go to the beach and look good right. all right Got the that. winter you're gonna know if you put in the work or not <laughs> like if you take your shirt off in the summer and you look good a girl too you take your your cover off you're yeah. gonna know if you were putting in the work yeah, like, you know yeah, what i mean yeah but yeah i just believe you put in the work it's all gonna pay off that's right that's right it's funny kind of how simple like it is it's a simple you know? it's a simple like but it's just so it's like the hardest thing to it's do. It's the though. hardest thing to do, 100%. And it's so weird. like I said, it's not for everybody. No. It's not for everybody and that there's a reason why it's a select percentage yeah. of humans on this earth that That's are right. willing to do it. That's right. It's you got to be wired differently. You got to be willing to go to a certain extent, put your body through a certain type of pain yeah. to get to that point. And it's really like I said it's not for everybody, but it definitely is for me. That's right. Yeah. Tell you that. Vito, yeah. your weight People you're fighting, eight ounce gloves. Now I fight in tens because I moved now up to 54. So, so 47, 54. 47 is four, uh, mm. eight ounce gloves, 54 is 10 ounce. And you, mm. you're still feeling mm. that yeah, power in yeah, those yeah, tens. I feel like I'm getting stronger every fight. Come on, man. Because what's the future then? Where, yeah, where are we going? Path? That's what I'm saying. I never put a ceiling on where I want to get to. There's never it. a ceiling. I'm never satisfied. And I'm always looking at ways every camp to improve my stamina, my, my strength, my speed. My IQ, mm -hmm. my mental state. Like, I'm always looking for ways to improve. And, uh, yeah, I believe if you, you can never put a ceiling on it because that means you're limiting you're yourself. You're capping it. Yeah, you're capping it. And, no, nah, you can't. You got to just keep it pushing. Do we have a next opponent or we don't yet? We don't have a next opponent okay. yet. Okay. Um, my fight date should be announcing soon. Okay. Probably in the next week or two. Okay. Mm. I'm excited. I'm coming off, like, a little bit of a layoff, like a six, seven-month layoff. So I'm excited to get back th in there, show what I've been working on. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, continue to put on a show for everybody. I appreciate all my, uh, my supporters, my doubters, my family, everybody that just that shows love to me That's in right. all different ways. So I'm appreciative of everybody. Most importantly, I want to thank God. I'm blessed for everything that he's presented to me in my life and what he continues to present to me. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep believing in this plan. That's right. That's right. That's it. Yeah, you've been touched by God, bro. You just got to stay sure. with his path for you and exactly. trust it, and you're doing it. Exactly. You're doing it. You're motivating us all, dude. You're motivating me and Mikey right now. Exactly. I know the people that are listening are getting yeah, motivated by sure. you, dog. So, honestly, thank you for coming today, man. Absolutely. And you're welcome back anytime. We ride with you. Man, I didn't know how fast the time went. I know, yeah. bro. I don't want to hold you, but seven right now. you're welcome back. I I don't know how. I've never <laughs> had time. For, yeah, you know, that yeah. flu. Yeah, it goes quick. No, man. yeah, it, it definitely quick. is. I would definitely be more than happy to come on again so you're here oh, podcast I love chopping man it up. You're, whenever you're you're in town this might make me want to open up my own i wish you should, bro. you, you really see should. yourself no, doing really it should. actually like you should i've never really sat like i said i I'm never really you. sat down and talked but it's like natural you release like a lot of things right. off your mind That's like right. i just i almost just like rethought of like my whole entire like wow. journey wow and i liked that i thought that was pretty cool dude if you're on the road like it's easy yeah, you know, bro. You yeah. got to travel. You yeah. got to spend some time. Right? Mikey's the tech guy. If you ever need help yeah, with setting anything set up, up, I got you. He's definitely. Your guy. Um, I, I like this. This is definitely cool. You could do it, bro. You could do this yeah, anytime. And uh, that's like, that's the best thing for your fan supporters. Come yeah, on. Everyone's trying to them. hear how you're yeah, doing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's yeah, trying so to hear for how sure. you're doing. I like this. Yeah, man. So thank you again for coming, Vito. You, Welcome back anytime. The You're Here podcast, Dave, Mike, we're with you. We're riding with you, dog, through your journey. I appreciate you guys. If you got some Vito Malnicki Jr. merch, we'll wear it. Yeah. Definitely. If you got no, something for us, we'll wear it. We'll hang it, bro. Yeah, yeah. We'll hang it. Once I get my next line coming out, I'll definitely let you guys know. Let us know. No, but gotcha. we're following your fights. We'll be yeah, following man. this next one. I appreciate um, you guys. Of course, brother. Is there anything you want to leave somebody with right now who may be uh, wanting to hear something that you have to say? Or any shout outs that you got? Any C C4? Yeah, shout out to Come C4. On, shout out to Ed Hardy. There we go. Uh, yeah, my official sponsors. I got a few others, but I really want to give a shout out to my family. Beautiful. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad, my brother, Joey, my sisters, Tori and Amanda. Um They've been the most important part of my journey mm -hmm. thus far, and they'll continue to be the most important part of my journey. But uh, to everybody who's watching, um, just keep going. I know it could get tough. I know it could get dark. Uh, just keep going. Stay strong mentally, physically, and um, keep pushing forward. It'll all work out in the end. And uh, if you put in that pain, you put in that work, you'll get the results you want. So just stay locked in. Can you do me one favor? Yeah. What's that thing you said in that video? Why? There's a little rap you got. 
Oh, oh can I you got do you, that for you. me, yeah, bro? Yeah, yeah. All right, all um, that pain, all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. All this pain, all this hurt, all these miles, all this work for what? A chance at greatness. To have your name remembered with the great ones. Born a fighter, gonna die a legend. Eight weeks of hell for just a little piece of heaven. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Like, hey, like we talked nice about, putting that pain, putting that work, you'll get just a little piece of that taste. But you keep putting it in, you'll get it. You'll get the full plate. You know That's what I right. mean? You'll That's you'll right. eat. So, yeah, just stay locked in. Just keep working. Stay uncomfortable, and uh, your journey will bring you to where you want to be. I guarantee you that. Beautiful, beautiful. Take I'm taking that to heart. I mean. Take us out, Mike. That's, I mean, that's it, man. You were here podcast episode 247. I mean, we don't have to ask questions. There's yes, nothing. Sir. There's yes, nothing. Sir. We don't have to ask anything. <laughs> that's it. That was amazing. Um, that's it, man. That's it. Mine is Mike. I'm out. Thanks. My name's Dave. I love y'all. Please be kind to of yourself. I appreciate Please you guys. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, you guys man. for having me on. Welcome. I want to do this again for Anytime, sure. dog. Absolutely. Doors open. Doors Definitely. open. Thank you, Vito. Pain, all this hurt, all these miles, all this work, for what? A chance at greatness, baby. To have your name remembered with the great ones. Born a fighter, gonna die a legend. Eight weeks of hell for a little piece of heaven. You know what time it is, baby. Okay, now I, now I gotta really do it. Dave, you have to. Don't put the behind Please, you. We're good, we're good, we're good! Yes! <laughs> I don't wanna look at this anymore.